how to invest $20 million for the long term. That is what we're talking about today, guys. I'm Rob Tatro. Thanks for tuning in. So you've got $20 million. Congratulations, you've done it. Maybe you've sold a business or you've inherited. Maybe you're an athlete, a movie star. Congratulations. Either way, you've won the lottery. You've done it. You're in the extreme 0.1% of the Canadian population. You're ultra high net worth. And now that comes with a whole other bag of problems, specifically tax, estate planning, legacy planning, philanthropy, you know, income splitting, trusts, legal situation, corporate situation. How are you going to do all of this, right? So you're unsure about all of this and you want to know where to start. I'm going to go through those things right now in this video for you so you know what to do with your $20 million. The first thing I would do is I would sit down with your advisor, your professional, a guy like me, and I would set some goals. What do you want to do? Now, clearly you're probably not working anymore or maybe you're no longer working. How much do you want to draw down from that per year? What is going to be your living expense? Do you have long-term goals? Do you have charitable aspiration? Do you want to set up your family multi-generational wealth, right? Do you want to make sure that your kids are never going to have to work? Do you want to make sure that their kids are never going to have to work? What about an education component to that? Do you want to make sure maybe that none of the kids or none of your future grandkids, great grandkids ever have to worry about going to school? Maybe you don't want any of your kids or grandkids to ever work. These are all goals that you have to set up. Now, clearly the more ambitious the goals are, you might not be able to do them all with $20 million, but you should be able to do a whole whack of them. Now, if you just came into this $20 million recently, one thing I would advise, whether it's, you know, inheritance or, or lottery or, or, you know, you sold an asset that's significant. One thing I would advise, especially if you've never really had wealth, is to make a plan for the short term. That should include spending on yourself, whether it's a couple hundred grand or some trips, some lavish trips, something special and unique that you want for yourself that you've always wanted, whether it's jewelry or, you know, a signed LeBron jersey, whatever that might be that you've always wanted, go out and buy it and reward yourself. What you don't want to start doing is not having a plan for this. If you don't have a plan, you end up impulse buying. You end up buying everything you see, and next thing you know, the money disappears. So have a short-term plan. That short-term plan should also include going to someone like me with the check, depositing, and telling someone like me to just take a month or two and just let it sit in a high cash premium savings account that's generating the best possible return you can get in short-term guaranteed investment, something like 5% right now, something like that. So at least the money's sitting there, it's earning something. You know, even if it's only earning 5%, that's gonna earn you a million dollars per year, right? So, you know, there's there's nothing wrong about just letting the money breathe for a bit while you kind of figure out what you need to do, what you need to plan, short-term goals. So set some short-term goals, and those should include some trips, some spending, taking care of yourself, taking care of your debt, medium-term goals, which should should include you know, maybe longer trips or work situation or setting up trusts and setting up your picture of wealth and then some long-term goals. And the long-term goals should look at multi-generational, charity, philanthropy, and kind of late stage life, estate planning. So you want to set up some goals. You'll want to sit down with your professional like myself and sit down and make some goals like that. And by the way, if you'd like to sit down with us, chat about this, go to www.speaktorob.com. We'd love to book a no obligation consultation to chat about this or anything else that's on your mind. So now you've set different goals. You've set short-term goals, spending. Maybe you're going to spend half a mil or a couple hundred grand on yourself short-term. You've got some medium goals and you've got some long-term goals. Now we need to understand risk tolerance and diversification. So risk tolerance is how comfortable are you going to be in the day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month movement of the valuation of your portfolio? Because that will define your asset allocation, how much you should have in stocks, guaranteed investments, and others. And others can include alternatives such as real estate, farmland, private equity, etc. Typically, what we've studied, what I've studied in my life is that the more assets an individual has, the more they have an allocation towards alternatives. So alternative asset classes typically are real assets. They're based on real assets, whether that's multifamily, rental units, infrastructure, music royalties, farmland. It's the asset classes that we can buy as portfolio managers that are largely passive, that sit there, pay a very tax efficient distribution, and over time appreciate in value. You're aiming to get double digit returns with this portion of your portfolio. Portfolio. So because you have $20 million, you have to worry about tax. You're going to get those T3s, those T5s, all of that income is taxable. You have to be aware. Therefore, our job is to reduce the tax burden for you. So we talked about asset allocation. We talked about diversification. We talked about tax minimization strategies. Tax minimization strategies, a big, big, big benefit of that is the alternative assets, anything that's got deferred capital gains. Dividends, Canadian eligible dividends are also a little bit more tax efficient. So we want to look at all those and build a portfolio that's as tax efficient as 
it possibly can be. And if you're not sure about that, go to speaktorob.com. I'd love to explain that to you in further detail. Feel free to book a no obligation consultation. Finally, when it comes to your $20 million, you're gonna wanna maintain two things. One, you're gonna wanna maintain close contact with your advisor, someone like me, who does nothing but this, works nothing with high net worth individuals and knows because your needs are gonna change, your goals are gonna change, your life is gonna change. Over the next two, five, 10 years, you're gonna change. Your needs, your income, you're gonna have different problems than most others. You know, you're gonna wanna advice as to how to create those trusts and how to create the best taxable estate situation, the least taxable estate situation. So that's the kind of stuff that you're gonna have to be close with your advisor. So you're gonna wanna make sure to keep a nice, close professional relationship. And yes, you're gonna pay for that advice, but you know what? You're in a tax bracket that you need this advice. If you screw something up in a $20 million tax bracket, we're talking about multi-million dollar mistakes. So you need to make sure you're getting the absolute best advice when it comes to this. You can't screw this up. And the other thing is long-term perspective. You're gonna wanna make sure that you keep a long-term perspective with this wealth, because the idea should not be to blow through this as fast as you possibly can. The idea should be to maximize the amount of wealth that you have for yourself and for whoever else will benefit from this wealth. Whether it's charities, whether it's your kids, whether it's your grandkids, whoever, the strategy should be to maximize wealth long term. All right, guys, I strongly encourage you guys, if this is of interest to you, if you're in that $20 million tax range, check out this video. Check out our other videos that we've put out on similar topics, tax efficiency of alternatives, you know, investing, diversification, real asset investing. Those are asset classes and investment topics that I'm incredibly passionate about. If you'd like, come talk to me. We'd love to book a chat with you about that as well. Thanks for tuning in, guys, today. And remember, you've done it. You've built the wealth. Now you just need to protect it, grow it in the most tax efficient way possible so that you and your family can be happy. Congratulations. I'll see you guys in the next video.